we're taking the Frigo bike again. Um, I saw a lot of you guys' comments. Trust me, I read all those comments, so uh, I try to like everyone's comment. Unless it's uh, super long and it's going to take me a while to get back to it or some information I just don't have yet. But uh, you guys said that you guys like this bike, so I guess I might as well take it again. I still have it. Um, I did post it for sale. Um, maybe by the time this video goes out, it might actually be gone. But for the most part, still got it. And it's a pretty nice bike for what it is. Just keep in mind, there's something I want to talk to you guys about because a lot of you guys have been telling me to call out the company about this. And I'm not here to bash a company, but I'm here to be honest with you guys. So let's get on the way and let's talk about the big elephant in the room. And that is going to be the simple fact that this bike isn't a 1200 watt e-bike. It's actually somewhere around a 750 to 850 watt motor in the back with a peak of about 1200 watts. So that's something you guys definitely need to know because when this bike was sent to me, as they were talking to me, you know, all the other reviews I saw, everyone's talking about it's 1200 watts and all that kind of stuff. You look at the motor, it's no bigger than the Super 73 RX stock motor. It looks exactly the same, but when you actually get a close up view of it, which I did in my review video, if you guys didn't see that, the motor says 1200 watts. And so I was very, very excited for it. It's a 48 volt system. So it's not a 52 volt system like the aerial rider or some other e-bikes that are on the market but i mean 1200 watts on a 48 volt system is still gonna feel pretty damn good right it's gonna please a lot of people on the market so i feel like that's why a lot of people bought this bike is because they're like oh yeah 1200 watts like hell yeah i want that i don't want a 750 watt motor i want to be able to do 35 40 miles an hour well I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm on a full battery and I'm only hitting 27.6 miles per hour. So uh, it's not going that fast. The electric bike companies that I've been riding and the Ride One Up e-bike that I just got done riding, that one, um, go ahead, man. Go, go, go. Taking forever. Those went 28 or 30 miles an hour. So the fact that those only had 750 watt motors, you can tell that this thing is limited. Um, I think the biggest con of this bike is the controller in the back. I don't know exactly what the controller amps is. There is one little sticker on the battery that says 17A. I'm assuming that's amps. And someone in the comments said something about that's when it was made. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I read that comment. I was like, what is this guy talking about? Uh, anyways, <laughs> you get some weird comments sometimes. But hey, I'll tell you right now, right now we're hitting 30, which is not bad at all. But I'm telling you right now, a 1200 watt e-bike with the right controller should easily, with my weight being 160 pounds, 165 pounds, it should at least get me 35 miles per hour or so, I think. But here's what I will say. For the price of this bike, it's actually not bad, especially if you use my $100 off coupon code. I don't know if anyone else has coupon codes for this bike. Maybe there are some out there. I think they're all about 100 bucks. But you guys can get this bike Technically, I believe $1,400 because right now it's on sale for $1,500 for the Halloween sale. Um, I hopefully it didn't end. Hopefully it's still active because if it is, you can apply my coupon on top of the sale and get it for about, I think, $1,399, which is really not a bad price for this. Just don't expect it to haul ass, but I do feel like it's going to fit like 80 to 90% of the people out there that don't really care about going super fast. But the people that are really gonna look at that number, 1200 watts, they're really gonna be like, okay, I want that bike because it's better than the, the other ones. But I'm here to tell you, it's exactly the same. And since I've had about 20 miles on this bike, I can give you kind of my overall feel of uh, everything going on with it so far in the 20 miles. And the first thing I could tell you is we lost one of the headlight bolts. So there's supposed to be two bolts on both sides of the bracket for the headlight, and one of them's already gone. I have no idea when that fell off, but it definitely came off in the first 20 miles because I saw it uh, when I parked it the other day and I was like, wait a minute. I was like, where's that bolt? So now the headlight is really bouncing all over the place. And I'll tell you right now in my review video when I did that, if you did see it, um, that's not the reason why the headlight was bouncing around already. We had both bolts on both sides. I remember because I made sure all the bolts were tight and everything like that but apparently you need Loctite or something. So if you do have this bike and you do order it, think about either 
double checking your headlight bolts or just get some Loctite. Take the bolts out, put Loctite, screw them back in because you definitely don't want to lose those bolts. And so far, no complaints with the tires. I haven't seen any thorns or anything like that in them. I haven't got a flat. They haven't lost pressure. They don't feel like wobbly or anything like that. They feel well balanced. I don't seem to have a problem with these tires at all. The only thing is these tires are loud. So that's something you might want to consider. I don't mind it. I got a full face helmet on, but I definitely get to hear the tires through my helmet when I normally don't hear my e-bike tires. But the fact that I'm not picking up anything and getting a flat, that's a good sign right at the back. Cause some tires on bikes, they just have a tread design that likes to uh, suck everything up and then suck all these thorns up and you get a flat like instantly. So, so far so good on that. Another thing too, is that the brakes have gotten worse. Like they felt a little good when I first got the bike, but both brakes on both sides have got way worse. So just keep that in mind too. I feel like this bike doesn't slow down fast enough. It could be the pads. Maybe that's something you have to do is change out the pads, but I'm just not seeing a good improvement on these brakes. I don't like them. They're very cheap to me. Like they don't even have a brand on this side. Do they have a brand? No, wait. Yeah, there's no brand on these hydraulic brakes. And this one, which is a cable brake, just has a star with a five in the middle. I don't know what that means at all. Let's see what our top speed can be coming downhill. The bike's not cutting out, which is good. Most bikes will cut out when you go downhill, even when you unlock the limiter. So we're hitting 36 miles per hour coming downhill. That's not bad. We'll see if uh, we'll be able to make this green light. That car's just sitting there, so I think they helped us. Ooh, we made it. And now we're holding about 30 miles per hour. It's a good speed for the bike. I actually have not got my GPS out to verify the speed. We should do that one of these days. But one big complaint I will say too, I know I like to complain about a lot of stuff, but I'm just trying to, just trying to be like real with you and stuff. All right, I wanna make sure that car knew I wasn't going straight. Um, I don't like the the voltage on the battery. It just bars. There's no actual voltage reading. So as I was coming to work and going up the overpass right over there, it says that we went down two bars and we only have six bars, which means like, I'm probably gonna lose another bar before I even get to work. And then I'm like, oh my God, how far am I gonna be before like I run out of power before I get home? But it goes off a voltage sag. So as I'm on the throttle, it goes down. And then as you let off the throttle, it goes back up to it's saying 100%. I don't like that type of reading. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but it's just horrible. They need to have some type of voltage reading on here. And someone else said something about pushing the M button multiple times to get into the voltage reading. So let's just come to a stop really quick. Hold on. That's my time. That's my miles, my trip. Volume. I wonder what that means. It says 50.5 miles. What does that mean? And it moved as we were just sitting here. So what does that mean? And then current miles. Wait, hold on. Let's see what C-U-R means. What does that mean? C-C-U-R. Oh, God. Those are where the thorns come from. I don't want to get one of those. So that does nothing. Doesn't look like it's doing anything. Oh, my God. Don't run over that stuff. Stop it. <laughs> I have no idea. So we have another timer on here, then we have the odometer, then we have the trip that I'm currently on, then the volume, which is VOL. I think I'm gonna start leaving it on this from now on. I don't care about my miles on my trip. I can care less about that. I kind of want to know my actual uh, miles that I have left. When I let off, it goes past 50 or up to 50. But when I'm on it, it's about 46, 47. Let's see how it is when I come uphill. I bet you it's definitely gonna dramatically change coming uphill. Cause we're gonna be struggling for power. Which, uh, we're not going very fast. We're doing 21 miles an hour. Some of those beach cruiser e-bikes go a lot faster than this and people are all in ass. So we're down three battery bars now. So yeah, so we have three battery bars left. That's what I don't like. I don't like that at all. But it's still saying 46.8 miles. I don't know. 
But even though I complain about this bike a lot coming to work, I'm trying to give you guys all the cons on this bike and if it's really like a downside to you because if it really is, then you might want to think about not buying it. But uh, it got me to work perfectly fine. No issues with that. Didn't get left stranded. Don't have any issues with the bike cutting out or stopping or how to push it home or something. Kind of like the other e-bike that we reviewed. <laughs> that was uh, great. That ended up being a power uh, thing. So one of the buttons on the display was getting stuck. And that's exactly why the bike was turning on and off. It felt like someone was actually holding on. Thank you. Now I'm going to go around you too. I don't think you heard my bell. <laughs> I'm in a mad rush to get home and someone look, just got pulled over. Oh, it was a Tesla. What did the Tesla do? Going super fast, very quiet. I don't know, they could have been jamming, who knows. Ooh, shit is going down after work. I am in a good mood. I got the next three days off. I'm chilling. Hell yeah, I should ride over there and be like, hello, what's going on? <laughs> All right, so we got the bouncy headlight, obviously, because we're missing the bolt, so it made it a lot worse, but it was already bouncy before this whole light was like messed up already. There was no issue with the bolt being gone, but now the bolt's gone, it's even worse. But that's just something uh, I got used to with this bike is the headlight with that bracket is not on there very good. And it's not how I did it. That's exactly how you're supposed to install it. I did one of my bolts backwards though. Um, I know you guys are probably gonna roast me in the comments for that, saying I didn't do it right, but the bolt's supposed to go coming my way, but I couldn't get it to work that way, so I went the opposite way where the nut is on the outside, but it still is like held on the same exact way. I installed it the right way it's supposed to go, but it's just kind of garbage the way it goes in. But anyways, other than that, the best thing on this bike is the headlight. You can't lie that this headlight is not good for what you get on this bike. Most bikes do not come with a nice, fat, motorcycle-looking headlight. This is a very nice light, and there's some people down there. People live down there. What the hell is going on? Okay, we got to get over. We got to get over, people. Well, yeah, it looked like there was like a family down there, some lights and stuff. I bet you uh, some people live down there. 33 miles an hour i was gonna try to beat this car but that doesn't seem like the safe thing to do so i am gonna hold off i could have made it though i think i would have made it all right we're gonna take this shortcut again just because it's a slower e-bike we've been taking the slower e-bikes today you know last past week actually so not too bad we'll see if we run into any people on the trail this time like we did the last time and uh i'm hoping i pray to god Next video after this, I'm hoping that we will take the Suron and go to this overpass that we're going to be coming up to soon, and we're going to go right around the dirt. Now, I can't promise anything because I got a lot of stuff to do on my three days off. We're switching computers, so that's a huge mess by itself. I got a lot of stuff to transfer back and forth, and that by itself, like it, one of the transfers for, was it like 10 gigs or 8 gigs? took overnight it took almost like 12 hours or so to do i think it was like eight or nine but it was it was a lot so uh that's a huge change because i got to make sure that i don't have any downtime with switching computers and i can make sure i got all my programs on the other computer so we can rock and roll right off the bat and then uh we got some clothing oh my god oh god come on come on bunny i love bunnies i would pet you and play with you but uh i don't want to run you over or i don't want to wreck but Beyond Riders uh, sent us a nice new jacket. So it's their new ultra protection. And uh, I, I did unbox it a little bit. I didn't really fully check it out just because I just wanted to make, is that an owl? Is that, that's an owl. Oh, I know you guys can't see that. Oh my God. I know you guys can't see that because the GoPro is not very good at night. And uh, it's obviously such a wide angle. God, man, that was cool. Yeah, I really wish you guys could have saw that. That was dope. But um, anyways, going back to what I was saying, um, it's definitely gonna replace what I'm wearing right now. And I got level two protection in them. And they also have some new gloves that they came out with. So I'm gonna be checking those out. I think they're really gonna be gloves that I use for like skateboarding really only because even though they have protection, they don't have full protection, it's, it's half. 
but I like the fact that it's half because when you're actually on a skateboard, it has the guards for if you were to slide like on your wrist or something like that. So that's nice. And you can actually feel your remote. That's one of the biggest cons that I think about gloves. When I put these on and I go to ride my skateboard, these are a pain in the ass. Like you can't feel anything. So sometimes if I'm on a fast skateboard, I'll barely hit the throttle and then I actually hit it more than I thought I did and you just take off and you're just moving. Ah, something's like itching me on my nose. I hope it's not a bug or something because uh, our break room has ants, man. And <laughs> I try to spray some stuff right before I put my helmet on there, but I don't know how many I killed and I don't know where they were coming from, but you know, eight hour, nine hour shift, they're definitely going to come back somehow. I know I didn't kill them all, so I'm hoping that's not what uh, I felt on my nose right now, moving around. I'm hoping it was just like a hair or something. But man, I'm trying to pedal. I'm trying to get this bike to go faster and we can only do 18 miles an hour up this overpass. That's kind of sad, I'm not gonna lie. The average person is probably not gonna complain, but a true enthusiast on electric bikes might have a different opinion. I feel like they can do better than that. But what I was, what I was trying to get at earlier is that, so I have a lot of stuff to do. We're switching the PC, we got the Beyond Riders clothing, and then I uh, might be detailing the car. I know it's been forever since I've detailed a car. Like I was probably one of the top detailers in Fresno for a short amount of time, maybe like for a year. And then I started losing some help and then I got really busy with work and I started kind of dropping off and then so many more places opened up, you know, like I was really open with telling people like, hey, I use this product, I use that product. And this is how to keep your bike clean, you know, like I never really hid the fact of anything. I always like to try to help people out. And uh, it kind of bit me in the ass because a lot of people that I would detail their car, even one of my friends, I mean, we're still good friends, but he even started his own detailing thing, like where he was taking like his neighbors in, he bought his stuff to do his car, which I'm like, cool, do your cars and stuff. But he was taking his neighbors, then he was taking his friends of friends. And I was actually having him help me sometimes on jobs. Not much, but you know, he kind of got the gist of what we did. And uh, it kind of sucked because it kind of takes my uh, customers away instead of them saying like, oh, my buddy details, like, do you want him to do it for you? And then he hits me up and then I can pay him like a commission for helping me out, you know, but it just, you know, the whole situation sucks. Anyway, I stopped detailing. Um, my back got all messed up. We don't do that no more, but I might be doing it this weekend. So it's going to be like a, like a lime, it's not a lime green. It's like a, uh, it's a bright ass green color. It's a light green color, but it's re it really pops. Maybe I'll have a picture of it, I don't know. But uh, we'll see if we do that or not. But that's pretty much my three days off. I really wanted to do something Halloween-ish. I kind of wanted to go to uh, like Hob Grove or Hell's Ranch or something, somewhere around here, like one's in Madeira. I think one's, man, I don't know if it's Selma or somewhere out there, I'm not sure, but I wanted to do something like that. But by the time this video goes out, it's gonna be too late. And uh, real quick, we are down to the two last battery bars on this bike. Again, keep in mind, it goes off a of voltage draw. So as I let off, because we're going to come in this neighborhood, so I'm going to slow down. It should definitely go back up. And there is no regen on this bike either. I wish there was. So look, we already, we're back up to four bars. <laughs> so that just tells you it's really hard to say. But remember I told you we were going to watch the, um, was it VOL, volume, whatever it's called. So if we hit the M button, there we go. We hit it twice. It says 44.6 miles. And as I let off, it goes up to 47.6. That's why it really makes me think it's not very uh, accurate. And then I think too, when I was telling you guys about the brakes earlier, um, this hydraulic brake goes completely to the handlebars. I'm only gonna use this one watch, check this out. Look, that's 100% that's braking. Not, no lies, I'm not even kidding. That was like all of it. That's all I had. So that's why I had to use both brakes. Now, it feels like that, but at the same time, I can come in here and there's a little screw that you can tighten to adjust your settings. And you can also do that to the, you know, the rear brake and all that kind of stuff too for the cable one. And you can also adjust the cable one up here. So we can get definitely get these brakes to like work a little tiny bit better. But man, with only how many miles do we have? Let's get out of this thing really quick. I only have 30 miles on the bike. So that means we've done, I think 11 miles. I think I had 19 miles on it when we left my house. So we've done 11 miles so far on this trip, but come on, man. 
That's just crap to me, right? Is it just me or what? You get what you pay for, people. It's a good bike for the price, but man, there are some, some shortcomings on it. And it's a 750 watt to 850 watt motor, not 1200. I wish it actually gave you a readout of the wattage. Some bikes do that. This one doesn't. Maybe they're trying to hide the fact that it won't show 1200 on the display. I don't know, but bikes that have nothing to hide, like the electric bike company, great bikes. It's just, you have to like that style of e-bike. It will tell you exactly how many watts you're pulling out of the bike. So I love that feature on the electric bike company. It's always nice to see what you're pulling. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the Mi bike was like that also. And the Mi bike was cool. It's a perfect cruising bike. I think a lot of people would love that bike. Um, I didn't mind it at all. I just, it sucked when it died on me. And obviously we figured out it was the button layout that I told you guys earlier in the video. And uh, anyway, we got rid of that bike. I sold it to someone. I actually ended up fixing it. I don't know if it was going to have another issue with it. But all I had to do was get a, uh, a flathead, a very small one, like something you use for your glasses to tighten them, put it underneath the button, and I popped the button out because it was literally just stuck in the down position. And then I rode it up and down the street, and it seemed fine. And even the people that bought it, they rode it, like, for five minutes. And then after they bought it, they forgot to take the keys. And when they took it down, took it down the street, he actually rode it home. I was like, oh, damn, okay, he's going to ride it home. And he said he never had an issue. He came all the way back, got the keys. So I was like, okay, I'm, I definitely know I fixed the problem because I also wrote it too and it wasn't doing it anymore. So I did put an update in that video in the description and I also put a little uh, pin comment on there, but the company wasn't very happy with that video. And I don't think this company is gonna be very happy with things, the, the, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the things I've said with this bike also. Oh God, what the heck? But hey, I'm just keeping it real. I mean, I have to be real with people. There's not a lot of real people out there. Like some people are going to make a 15 minute video going over the specs of the bike, showing you, you know, everything, but they're not gonna tell you like, oh, this sucks. They're just gonna say like, it comes with cable brakes and not hydraulic brakes. They're not gonna say, oh man, cable brakes like are not that good or this bike definitely needs hydraulic brakes for the amount of power it has. They don't really mention that. Everyone just kind of like sugarcoats things and tells you the basics of what you want to know. And they want to look good to the companies. And I understand because more companies reach out to you and then blah, blah, blah. But as long as I have your guys' support and you guys are watching these videos, especially watching them throughout to the end, because that's what really helps is the audience retention. If I have my retention uh, time really high on my videos, I know people are watching them all the way through instead of clicking on it. And then 10 seconds later, everyone clicks out of it and then just goes straight down. And then it doesn't really get recommended on YouTube. And then also hitting the like button really helps too. But I like when you guys comment because I always read the comments. Even if I don't fully reply to it, I try to like every single comment unless it's stupid. Then I, I just kind of leave it alone because I'm not going to entertain stuff like that. But I just want to hope you guys know that I'm trying to give you guys my best explanation on all these bikes and all that stuff so if you guys really appreciate how i say it is and you know i talk about you know i don't know how it is like that's <laughs> that's what i'm trying to get out as i say it, how it is and uh anyways hopefully you guys like that and thanks for sticking around to the end of this video and we'll see you in the next one hopefully subscribe if you guys haven't i haven't said that in the longest time other than when I do some videos and I say I'm going to ride it again if they want to check it out. But anyways, please subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Love all you guys. True MVPs. Oh, and if you want to know real quick where the VOL stands at when we got back to the house, it's at 47.1 miles.